Hello and welcome everyone. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for your patience and I'm here with Emily again. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself so that she I don't butcher her name. So thank you so much for returning Emily and we've got it right this time and we're good to go. Yes, my name is Emily Tamayo Maher, and I am the author of The Meaning Method. So I am a book coach, um, just like Elke, and I work with both nonfiction and fiction. And so, yes, I love these conversations and mm -hmm. have, and am happy to get into it, talking about both literary magazines and also uh, nonfiction books, too. Perfect. Now, can you tell me a little bit about sort of your journey, how you got started? Yes. So I, so I, it's been, I've loved writing all my life. Let's start nice. there. So I've loved writing all my life, but it's taken different forms mm -hmm. in my career um, over the decades. And so I started at the University of Iowa, you know, um, working with literary fiction and getting really into it. Then I worked at the UN for a while mm -hmm. and did grant writing and writing for NGOs and things like that. Yeah. And basically, I ended up in Bogota, Colombia as an English teacher. Wow. And I, my husband's Colombian. I love, I've lived in Colombia for a decade now. Wow. But in my career as an English teacher, it was, um, it wasn't what I expected it to be. I wasn't mm. able to have the kind of impact I wanted to have. Mm. I was working very long hours that were mm -hmm. keeping me away from my son. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it just, all things considered, it wasn't nearly as rewarding as I wanted it to be. Mm. So I really made the leap and jumped into becoming a book coach and working on my own books full time. And seriously, it's the best decision I've ever made. I've loved it so much. Oh, that's so fantastic. Now you mentioned literary uh, career. Mm -hmm. Can you sort of tell me a little bit about that? I know you've done submissions specifically, but can you tell me sort of how, walk us through your process um, and also uh, how you got accepted, rejection, rejected, and also how you handled the whole rejection thing. Cause I know that can be sort of gut wrenching. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And so, yeah, I mean, if you think back, so I was going to the University of Iowa right around 2000. Mm. And so, you know, since then, the University of Iowa started their writer's workshop in the 1970s. Wow. And so with with the whole boom of MFAs and mm. everybody getting really into literary fiction, there is a lot of volume going mm. into these literary magazines. And that was kind of the first uh, sort of literary career I really fell in love with. So there are uh, master in, in fine arts, masters in fine arts mm -hmm. in writing all over the country. And all of these graduates and students are all just throwing stories at literary magazines in order <laughs> to get an agent. And so mm -hmm. it's extremely competitive. There's kind mm -hmm. of a bottleneck there, but it's a fun bottleneck. And I just joined in the bottleneck. I really appreciate those kinds of books and have always mm -hmm. loved writing short stories. And so things to keep in mind, if you are submitting to literary magazines, Things to keep in mind are that there are about a thousand stories on, in the slush pile mm. on a desk of literary magazines every single month. Not a thousand <laughs> stories a year, a thousand stories a month. Yeah. So first of all, you know, despite rejection, which is inevitable, mm -hmm. love your literary magazines, love their editors, because yeah. that really is the ecosystem that's mm -hmm. creating a lot of mainstream books, a lot of literary books now. So that was my goal. I really yeah. wanted to become a part of that ecosystem. And so I went through a, a bit of trial and error. First and foremost, keep submitting, keep mm -hmm. improving, keep submitting, keep improving. Right. You know, you'll get the first time I was rejected, I remember I felt numb. It hit me hard. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any way to prepare <laughs> for those first rejections because yeah. a lot of times just getting into literary markets, it's just harder than you think it's going to be. Yeah. You know, you put a lot of love, you put a lot of juice mm -hmm. into a story and there's just a lot of stories going in. So I kept on submitting and kept on improving my stories. Yeah. But one thing, when you look at that number, a thousand, 
Mm. The slush piles of literary magazines are ginormous mm. and the editors are overworked and underpaid. Mm. And so the my golden ticket became the submitting to contests. So mm. for a $20 fee, and I don't work for any literary magazine, so this is not a sales pitch, but if it was, <laughs> it would be a pretty good one and a pretty easy yes. one. But the, I'm just saying the way I got my foot in the door, because in a slush pile of a thousand pieces, you can't guarantee that they're even reading it. So some of these rejections don't even take personally. There are just so many stories mm. on their desk. However, when you um, when you actually contribute, mm -hmm. you know, through a contest, paying that 20 bucks that usually keeps that magazine alive for a right. year other yeah. than university foundation donations. Right. When you submit to a contest that guarantees there's a contract in place that they will read your story. So at <laughs> least you can get honestly, earnestly rejected. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Rather than just not read, which is a step up. Mm. And so I started, rather than just submitting to the slush piles of magazines, I would enter multiple contests. Right. Sure enough, um, after submissions and improvements mm. and always working on my craft, yeah. I got read by famous authors. Wow. I, I got awards. I got mm -hmm. paid. Yeah. And so that really was so fulfilling for me becoming part of an ecosystem and then mm. successfully realizing mm. okay, I can get my foot in the door and make that work. So that's what I did. So I think the key takeaway here, because I know we have a few literary uh, writers here in the group, is just to just keep tweaking, keep submitting, um, and that it is just uh, a journey that you have to go to and rejection is part of the process. And I love what you said about the contest because I think that that is definitely underutilized in various ways because it supports the literary magazines, especially if you love to read them. And then it also, like you said, gives you a, guarantees that you're gonna be read and $20, that's totally worth it. So that is a great tip. Thank you so much for that. Now, you mentioned that you moved from you know, being a teacher and moving to wanting to, you know, write your books as well as be a book coach. Now, we all know that wanting to make that shift and actually doing it takes a lot of things. And one of those things I think is um, a shift in your mindset and just basically believing that you can achieve it. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what sort of mindset shifts or a shift that helped you to go from wanting to do that to actually making it happen? Yeah, and it's scary because I'm a mom, you know, I'm a breadwinner in my family. Mm -hmm. I also, at this point, I, um, I'm an employer. And so yeah. I have the livelihoods mm -hmm. of two other people yeah. and their kids uh, relying on me. So I did not take that shift easily. I'm a, an employer now that I have a company. Right. And I do not take those jobs lightly. These mm. people are like family for me. Yeah. And so, you know, I was going along. I was, I was a teacher. I was dead set on being yeah. a teacher all my life. I thought mm. that's how I could provide a great education for my son. And I was so scared of leaving. And so mm. one thing that really helped me make the shift mm. is, you know, I designed the business that I'm doing, the, the book coaching business that I run now. Right. I didn't just burn my bridges and mm -hmm. go for a dream. Right. I went from a job to another mm -hmm. job, right? Um, which is a fantasy, but it's not <laughs> only a fantasy. It also has, you know, a ledger, emails mm -hmm. to return, and Absolutely. all of those run of the mill things, which yeah. is, you know, gives me security and stability. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Yeah. So the way I really did it over time is so I joined a business program mm -hmm. and I launched my business before I left my teaching job. So mm -hmm. I will never forget that time. You know, I had clients writing books in Australia and the wow. United Kingdom. And so I would get up at 4 a.m. before I went to class and I would mm -hmm. have those meetings in the other time zones. And then I would also have the meetings with my clients in the United States mm -hmm. after work or on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I remember my, those. Yeah. yeah. And my clients at that time, they were some of, you know, they we were so close because they 
realized that I was only taking on a few clients and right. I was building, um, building a runway for me mm -hmm. to be able to leave. Yeah. Sure enough, you know, nine months after being able to serve some of those clients, yeah. um, I was able to leave. And so for me, the mindset shift was a little bit about the math. Mm -hmm. um, you know, seeing if this new salary would be able to replace my old salary. Yeah. And so just um, being courageous enough to have the dream because it was still scary, you know, mm -hmm. taking on responsibility yeah. for run it for, you know, meeting people and selling and marketing yeah. and doing all those things. But I was ready because I experimented before I left my job. Mm -hmm. And I was really glad that I didn't uh, have to do those first sales calls yes. when I really <laughs> needed it. Like it yeah. was just like a, it was a, it was a smooth transition. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. And I think I love what you said there about you move from one business to the next, because I think a lot of times, um, with writers, it's like they have this dream of being able to write full time. And it's almost like a fantasy. And I'm like, that's great that you have that. But you also have to treat it like a business if you really want to make it happen. And in a sense, that is a mind shift, mindset shift that it needs to be a, a business. And I have to treat it like that if it's something that I want to achieve. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And actually, you know, there are two little comments I'd love to add on to that, because okay. as far as now different people work in different ways. For me, mm. the pure creativity part of it, yeah. you know, I can only do that for a certain number of hours a day. And then I mm. do need distance from it. So, for mm. instance, this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, I was making major headway on my book. Yeah. But now... I do need to step back away from that book mm -hmm. for a moment. Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually overjoyed to be able to have conversations like this, <laughs> have some client yeah. meetings yeah. today. Mm -hmm. And so writing full time, there are people I know who, who churn out series books mm -hmm. very quickly. Yep. And so they spend a larger portion of everyday writing, yeah. which is great, but they mm -hmm. also have, you know, we'll work through outlines with them. I'll right. work through outlines with them. Mm -hmm. So it really is concentrated work. And so I think an important thing is to know that writing full time isn't spending eight hours a day on a novel. You know, exactly. that would burn out fast. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. often it's good to ha find a trade off that you can do yeah. that you love, whether that's, you know, teaching at a university mm -hmm. or running a business like this yes. or, you know, marketing your own books and running a Facebook group, right? Um, something like that. But having a little bit of a trade off, it's good mm -hmm. to have responsibilities. It's good to be sucked into the real world, you know, even yeah. as a writer. Absolutely. Yeah. Because like you said, otherwise you get completely burnt out just writing for hours and hours at a time. I made that mistake when I first um, transitioned to non to fiction, um, to writing full time. So yeah, that's a great tip. It's all about the balance. Yes. Um, now, what made you choose the publishing route that you did? Because I know one of the struggles that many authors um, sort of go back and forth with is, do they do, do the traditional publishing route? Do they do the self-publishing route? Tell us about sort of your, how you decided which route you went and sort of why you chose that route. So yes, this kind of gets into the nonfiction. So with my literary short stories, mm. you know, um, I don't see kind of the robust marketing systems for literary mm. short stories right. um, in the self-publishing world, mm. but in the nonfiction world, in the mm -hmm. business world, I, I publish my own books mm -hmm. because I love the speed at which I can get them out into the world. Mm -hmm. I love being able to you know, test and experiment with my own cover art. Mm -hmm. I love being able to set the prices. I right. love being able to get the royalties. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I we are both hybrid po uh, mm -hmm. authors. There are right. certain things where we choose the traditional form. And then right. there are other things where we really row our own canoe and like mm -hmm. to maintain the control for very strategic reasons. Yeah. So, and that's something I love. You know, I've helped so many people launch their nonfiction mm. books and yeah. move deeper into their own businesses. Right. And whenever I've had those coaching calls where we're deciding between traditional and um, self-publishing, mm -hmm. each one is individual. <laughs> 
there are different Absolutely. choices depending mm -hmm. if you want to make, you know, the if you the majority of your revenue comes in on um, speaking, then sure, mm -hmm. maybe you are going to want to consider a more traditional route. Right. However, if you're selling courses, if you have mm -hmm. services, mm -hmm. if you have a message that you want to get out quickly mm -hmm. because you're at the beginning of your career and you want it to expand and you mm -hmm. want to grow your list. Yeah. Then for me with the meaning method, which was mm -hmm. my first book, right? I got that out right away in 2018. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of the foundation mm -hmm. that allowed me to leave my job in June right. of 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so that I really love the self publishing options yeah. for doing nonfiction. If you've got a message and you want to spread it, um, self publishing can be a much faster and more mm -hmm. rewarding way to go. Yeah. And I, right. And I love what you say, said about it being an individual choice. And that is absolutely true because, <clears throat> you know, we all have different things that we want from our lives and what we uh, hope for our writing lives. And it's different for every person. And a lot of writers feel like, well, they have to go this route or they have to go that route. And the truth is, it's your choice. You get to choose the route that you go to. And I think that that is amazing that in this day and time that we have that option because, you know, years ago, that was not an option. Yeah, yet. I know. Yes, exactly. So it's fantastic. So I always, you know, um, encourage writers when they're deciding is just to like really think about what you want for your um, writing life and decide which one is the best uh, direction for you because it is really a personal choice. Yeah, you have to define success for yourself because if you're running after some elusive fame, mm -hmm. you're just going to stumble all over the place. But yes. when you have clarity about what's right for you, whether you're doing series or yep. nonfiction or, you know, you want to get into an obscure literary mm -hmm. magazine like me, <laughs> um, you've got to know that and define success for yourself. And then when you know what you want, it is rewarding to get there. If you're yeah. just constantly, well, I sold some books, but who cares? You know, then it does get into that negative cycle of, I don't know what I'm doing this for. Yeah. Right. And I think, uh, you know, knowing what you want also helps you to make the decisions that you need to in order to have that success as well, too, you know, because you know why you're doing it. And then knowing why, you know what you need to do. And I think that is such a huge thing because you're absolutely right. Otherwise, you're just sort of like a dog chasing its tail, <laughs> trying yeah, to figure exactly. out trying different Going things. Nowhere. Yes, exactly. So that was perfect. I love how you put that. And now tell me, what is next on the horizon for you um, as far? I know you've got a book coming out for yourself as a writer, as well as if you've got anything exciting coming up for your business. I really would love for you to share that. Elke, thank you so much. So yes, I have The Meeting Method, A Spiritual mm -hmm. Path to Writing and Publishing, and it's mm -hmm. coming out August 24th. I'm mm -hmm. getting everything together Yay! now, just like working on it yeah. day by day. And so basically what this is, if you've ever taken a yoga class, what mm -hmm. I do is I, I take the, the writing process, the creative process, mm -hmm. and I manifest it through the chakras. So this is mm -hmm. a millennia old system. Mm. And it's kind of, a, it's a, it's got very old wisdom on the mm -hmm. way you manifest anything. Yeah. So I'll go down the chakras really quick. So mm -hmm. this is this is a really fun path, a very old path of manifesting that goes from the crown chakra mm -hmm. down. So right. In the Christian tradition, the, the mm -hmm. crown is your connection mm -hmm. to your higher self, to your mm -hmm. source, mm -hmm. to God. It's often depicted as a halo. Right. So you start with that inspiration, that, mm -hmm. that call to write a book. Right. Then you want to get into that third eye, the vision mm -hmm. for the book. Right. Both your vision for your life mm -hmm. and then the structure and outline mm -hmm. and practical matters of the book. Then in the throat, you're finding your voice yeah. in the heart. You're loving it and nurturing it and yeah. working on that book day by day, right. bringing it to life in the solar plexus, which is all about going pro. Mm -hmm. You're editing the book. Mm -hmm. Then the sacral chakra is about birthing it into the mm -hmm. world. It's mm -hmm. the womb. 
And then finally, rooting. You are you may have heard of the root chakra, yes. which mm -hmm. is all about giving it an audience, rooting mm -hmm. it into its market. Right. And then it, the book takes, you let it go and the book takes on a life of its own. Yeah. So yes, that's coming out in August 24th. And kind of a fun yoga thing to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have the... Um, it's what I call a writing yoga staycation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it takes you through that process with great information on mm -hmm. inspiration, outlining, yeah. developing your craft, mm -hmm. publishing and growing your audience. Mm -hmm. So I will be sure and pass on that link. link. So if you want to get a little, a little sample session, a little mm -hmm. taster, um, I really, we've had so much fun uh, in my group with the yoga writing staycation, uh, mm. just doing it together. Uh, I have a writing group too, uh, the yes. writer's black. Yes. And so, yes, that's kind of what's first and foremost for me right now. Okay. Yeah. And just for anyone, um, you guys may have heard me talk about um, that I was participating in a <clears throat> staycation. It was a challenge that you were doing and I just absolutely loved it. It was what I loved about it. It was so unique. I'd never seen anyone else kind of combine writing with the spiritual side of it and you know looking at it with your chakras and I just thought that was the most amazing thing and I love the way that you broke it down and how you had us walk through all of the steps I, I just absolutely loved it so I highly recommend it for anybody I know we've got a few uh, yoga enthusiasts here in the group and it combines the yoga as well too which was a uh, fantastic as well too so we're going to share the links down in the comments for that as well as any links to your book um, or your website where maybe you can find the book and well, we'll figure out the links and we'll make sure to post them in the comments. <laughs> and then if you have any questions for Emily, please post them in the comments and she'll come back and answer them for you. Um, if you want to check out her group, um, I know we've got some nonfiction writers in the group as well too. Some of her clients I know are um, with regards to nonfiction are memoirs. So, and I know my focus is just fiction, but I also always love connecting writers with people that can help them. So if you are interested in writing a memoir, I highly recommend that you check out um, Emily's uh, website as well too, and join her group and make, and see, you know, if you guys are a great fit. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions for Emily, please um, ask her here in um, the group. And we'll also make sure to post the, the links of where and how you can find Emily and all her amazing stuff. So thank you so much, Emily, for being thank a guest here you today. Thank for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So bye, guys. Ciao. Okay, I'm trying to end it. <laughs> Are we still live? I'm not sure. No, it said stop. Um, oh, here we go.